We are anonymous. Greetings world, we are anonymous. It has come to our attention, that a Thai court in Thailand has recently sentenced two Burmese migrants to be executed after they were arrested and convicted of the rape and murders of British backpackers, Hanno Witheridge, 23 and David Miller, 24 on the Thai, island of Kotal, back in September 15, 2014. Anonymous would firstly like to point out that we offer our condolences to all of the victims' families in the current case this video is about and the past cases we will discuss. It is the desire of Anonymous to seek truth and justice especially for the innocent victims who have had their young lives cut short. Anonymous has been watching this case because of the large amount of online supporters for two Burmese migrants over social media with many users and bloggers all suggesting on blogs and forums that they have been used by the Thai police as scapegoats to solve the case quickly and to protect Thailand's tourist industry. Anonymous has learned, that the Thai police have accused innocent people before, and would rather blame foreigners or migrants for such crimes so as to protect their tourism industry than accuse their own Thai locals, that may deter tourists from choosing Thailand as their holiday destination. Over the past few days, Anonymous, has carefully viewed many documents and gone over many facts surrounding this Qatar case, involving these two Burmese migrants, Wei Ifi O and Zolin. Anonymous has also done extensive research into other rape and murder investigations in Thailand as well, and we have found that there are many similarities with this recent case in Qatar and past cases, of which concerns Anonymous. Our concerns are as follows, biased sentencing with Westerners and migrants for crimes, using prisoners for political gain and publicity stunts, for example, the Bali Nine and Chapel Corby. Anonymous, is against any government who use prisoners including innocent prisoners for the benefit of getting a quick conviction to solve a case or for any kind of other publicity stunt for whatever purpose. Anonymous views these findings that we have learned, a disgrace to the, the Thai police with the way in which they handle their investigations of serious crimes that have been committed on their islands against foreign tourists. Here are a few cases Anonymous would like to mention first of all. This first case we will focus on, involves the rape and attempted murder of Sherry McFarlane and the murder of Kelvin Bk, Sherry's boyfriend both from Australia who were killed in Northern Thailand back in February the 3rd 2000. Let's take a look at the details of this first case that the Thai police, whom at this time were under much pressure to find the murderers quickly so as to solve the case, as much spotlight was on Thailand at this time. Note, this past rape and murder case is very similar to the current case in Koh Tao, involving two Burmese migrants, namely, Wei Ifi O and Zor Lin. In this past case, the Thai police had set up both Mr. Sang Thong Si Yang and Mr. In Thorn Si Jong, who were both of Chinese descent. In this case, the Thai police said that these two Chinese men, were responsible for the rape and attempted murder of Sherry McFarlane and the murder of Kelvin Bk. Subsequently, both Chinese men were found guilty and sentenced to death, the Thai police who had lied and falsified facts and evidence in their investigation. Here are some of the news reports about this case. Note there were non-Thai nationals. They had photographic calibis but it was ignored. DNA from the scene was bungled. The Thai police had threatened to kill their families, if they did not confess to the crimes and stage a public reenactment for the media, this was to show the Western world that the Thai police are competent and credible. Poor crime scene investigating. DNA evidence lost. The Thai police said that they had confessed to the crimes, which was a lie by the Thai police as they did not confess to the crime at all. The Thai police were anxious to secure an arrest because of overseas media attention. Both suspects accused the Thai police of torture. 
the Thai police had ignored the DNA of the two men and even had the lower court suppress the suspect's DNA from being compared to the DNA the Thai police submitted to the court. This was a clear case of police corruption and criminal conduct on the part of the investigating police officers. Thankfully because of pressure and support by locals who were prepared to stand up against such injustice, the case was again reheard by Thailand's Supreme Court and the judge in this court had found that the DNA taken from Sherry McFarlane and Kelvin K did not match the DNA of the two Chinese migrant suspects who were previously found guilty and sentenced to death by the lower court previously. The judge had acquitted them both and demanded that they be released as free men immediately. Had it not been for local help and the Supreme Court upholding integrity, these two Chinese migrants would have been executed for crimes their arresting officers knew they had never committed. Still today, this case has never been solved. The full details of this case are in the links below in the description. Dash. The second case is of the late Kirsty Jones 23, raped and murdered in her guest house in Chiang Mai also in northern Thailand, back in August also in the year 2000. Anonymous is wondering if this rape and murder could have been done by the same person or persons as Sherry McFarlane. The facts from this case are as follows. The Royal Thai Police were accused of bungling the investigation from the start. The Thai police had failed to secure the crime scene. Vital evidence could have been contaminated. In this case, the Thai police had arrested Andrew Gill, a non-Thai national, charged him with the rape and murder of Ems Jones and accused him of being with another accomplice whom they could not name. Andrew Gill was later freed as no DNA could link him to the crime. The Thai police then turned their attention to another suspect and arrested a Karen guide who it was claimed. They tortured into confessing and even told him to masturbate to produce semen, sources say, so that the Thai police could insert his semen at the crime scene. Fortunately for the Karen guide, the guide's association of Chiang Mai had marched onto the police station and demanded his immediate release, knowing he was a scapegoat and innocent of the crime and the charges were later dropped. Over some time, Sue Jones, Kirsty's mother had applied to view all of the documents involving her daughter's rape and murder only to be denied the documents by the Thai police. Sue then approached her own country's officials who said that they had supported the decision not to give her all corresponding documents and that it was for the benefit of good relations between the UK and Thailand governments. However, not giving up, Sue Jones had finally attained the requested documents only to find that names had been deleted from police reports. A breakthrough had occurred when two senior officers from Dyfed Pius Police in the UK, had found DNA and semen on Kirsty's sarong, that was used to strangle her and that DNA was noted as being of a Thai national, which cleared all previous suspects who were accused of the crime to which Lieutenant General Suthep Dijraksu and Commissioner of the 5th Region Police, comprising most of Northern Thailand had stated, that the Asian DNA was planted. Sadly, to this day, although the Thai police promised to look further into the crime and new revelation, it too is still unresolved and will probably remain unresolved, because it shows the DNA is of a Thai national, one could not be blamed for assuming such a belief. Anonymous would like to recommend to the two parents of both victims in these cases, find out if the DNA of both cases are match and put new pressure on the Thai police to reopen these cases to bring justice and peace to both parents. All links to this second case will also be below in the description. Only just recently, General Proit Wong Su Wan, had claimed that Thailand's judicial process is trustworthy, adding, that their authorities cannot reinvestigate the current case involving Wei Ifi O and Zolin, the two Burmese migrants, since this would mean that the judicial process has been incompetent. Nothing could be further from the truth and with this specific case in mind saying that the Thai police have been incompetent, would be an understatement. The third case involves Nick Pearson's 25 whose body was discovered in the ocean close to the location where this recent case relates to in October 2014. 
Nick Pearson's body was found almost in the same location as the Kotow killings of David Miller and Hannah Witheridge. Both Nick Pearson's loving parents Tracy and Graham Pearson's and brother Matt, are still fighting the Thai police for answers about their son's death. The Thai police in Kotow had put the cause of death, as a drowning, however Tracy and Graham Pearson's believe that he was murdered and that the Thai police are refusing to cooperate with them and give them any further information about their son's death. Anonymous would now like to show some quotes from Nick's mother, Tracy Pearson's. Tracy says it seems like they just want to protect their tourist industry but we need to know what happened. We don't believe the men they've arrested for the killing of Hannah and David, have anything to do with it. It's just a plan to show the police have acted, so they don't push tourists off. Further Tracy says, as soon as I saw the news about Hannah and David, I cried for them and their parents because I know how hard it is to get the truth on that island. Seeing it all on the news the same beach, the same police, has brought it all back and we're finding it hard to deal with. The above cases along with remarks from loving parents who have also lost a child on the island of Koh Tao, know only too well, first hand about their experience with the same Thai police. So far all of these cases have been consistent in clearly showing the corruption involved within the Thai police force with the Thai police being incompetent and having a lack of empathy towards all of the victims and showing a lack of consideration towards the parents, who seem to all want many answers. Instead, the Thai police have refused to help these parents about their children they have lost in Thailand. They seem only to care about one thing, their lucrative tourism industry. Anonymous has found that Thai police, lie, fabricate evidence, do poor police investigating, contaminate crime scenes, lose DNA and evidence, accuse non-Thai nationals, refuse to believe truth and evidence that would clear their preferred suspects and refuse to believe that their own Thai locals are responsible for any wrongdoing, such as accusing other investigators from other countries planted assane DNA. In fact Anonymous has also learned that not long after the murders of David and Hannah on Kotow, three Thai locals tried to copycat the exact murders on another foreign tourist from Germany in Udon Thai, in Muang district and have been arrested for the crime in which they used a garden hoe. Anonymous would now like to make mention about two recent cases this year in 2015 that we feel is of interest to us and you the viewer. Christina Wan is Lee. 23, another British backpacker, also died on the island of Kotow just a few days after she arrived in perfect health. Christina was a university graduate, straight A student and an activist, she died on January 21 this last year in 2015 on Kotow Island. Christina was by herself visiting Kotow and she was found dead in her room at the InTouch Resort in Kotow. It is ironic that the owner of the InTouch Resort just happens to be none other than Montreux Tuvichian. According to this report, Montreux Tuvichian, the initial suspect for the David Miller and Hannah with a ridge rape and murder case. The autopsy report put Christina's death as natural causes. However, Christina was found face down with blood running out of her nose and mouth, after being found by a hotel cleaner. Also, we noted that Christina's parents had to track down the last known person who had seen their daughter alive as they say, the Thai police were not interested in helping them any further, reiterating that her death was from natural causes and her case was closed. Christina's father had commented that he found this very disappointing and unhelpful towards grieving parents. Anonymous, does not claim to be forensic pathologists or medical experts. But this case is of interest to us, as it involved Kotow Island and the first suspect in the David Miller and Hannah with a Ridge case. Lastly, we have another suspicious case involving another tourist from France, namely Dimitri Poffs 29. The short facts in this case is that Dimitri was found hanging from his bungalow balcony ceiling, but amazingly he had his hands tied behind his back. Many people on social media had claimed foul play however, the Thai police on the island of Kotow, had concluded his cause of death was a suicide. A suicide note was left near his bed saying Iris, I love you, 
suicide seems easy but it is actually difficult, but no effort was put forth to verify if the handwriting was that of Dimitri. Police reports say there was no evidence of a struggle. Again, Anonymous has no conspiracies about these last two deaths but they certainly add that the total of deaths on this island of Kota and one must now be highly concerned about the way these cases are investigated and concluded. There seems to be way too many deaths involving tourists on the island of Kotao, and a lack of support or help for their parents wanting answers. Now let us review the current case involving Wei Fi O and Zorlin and look at the facts that we know of and see if there is a familiar pattern with Thai police, and in the way they have investigated this crime. As we have noted earlier in the year 2000 the Thai police have not really been shown to be very competent or professional when investigating crime scenes. Police say early in morning on the 15th of September 2014 that they receive a phone call tipping them off that two bodies were laying on the beach in Kotao that were suspicious. The Thai police claim that this call was from a female and they did not consider to ask for her name to make any further inquiries later. When the first police officer arrived at the scene of the crime, photographs show both bodies of David Miller and Hannah with Aridge, lay on the sand and in the water. Then another set of photographs showing the crime scene shows clothing of Hannah with Aridge out to be different, namely, her white skirt is missing and replaced with different shorts. David Miller's clothes were initially shown as strewn over the sand however, the second group of photographs show shoes and clothing of both victims placed neatly onto a rock. This shows the crime scene to have been contaminated straight away. To our surprise and so early at the crime scene we see, Montreux Tuikian right there amongst the police and before corners and forensic police had even arrived. Here are some pictures of Man and note he is actually stepping over the poorly barricaded crime scene rope. For what purpose Man is doing this or why he is spreading his DNA all over what should be a sealed off crime scene, is anyone's guess. We can see Man standing here and note Hannah with Ridge's body without the blue body bag under her feet or body, giving evidence that Man was clearly at this crime scene very early in the morning. Seeing Man at the scene of the crime at such a very early stage would now give him a valid excuse, being seen by many police and others as to why any of his DNA would have been found at the scene of the crime. It should be noted that Man was actually implicated as a suspect for this crime and police had said that they viewed him as the main suspect, had taken him into the police custody to answer questions and conflicting reports say that they had arrested him however, other reports say that they did not arrest him as shown here. Knowing that man was the prime suspect and seeing his picture contaminating the crime scene shows a major lack of incompetence from the Thai police in charge of this horrific case. A proper barricade at the crime scene would have protected vital evidence including DNA, so that no one could have any excuse as to why their DNA was found at the scene. Man was the brother of the village headman were of Antuikian and his son which is were at Tuikian or Nomsad, is the nephew of Man, who police had called their second suspect and was wanted for questioning. It is interesting that Man first claimed that he was the runner in the CCTV footage police released as the main person of interest but then police had claimed it is evidence that implicates his nephew who later was cleared because other CCTV footage showed him not to be on the island at the time. However, this evidence is the subject of much debate. In the events that followed, the island headman had then come to the police station and after having a discussion with police they had let Montreux go a free man. After a week when police finally found and caught up with were at the headman's son, Sources say that he had a trimmed haircut and had been missing for about a week given him much needed to to plan for anything he needed to or find assistance with his alibi or any other facts that would accuse him of being involved in the murder. Anonymous can only present assumptions about this of course however they all relate to this crime. Whereat's lawyer at or Nonage, produced a photograph, showing that his client was not on the island at the time of the murders displaying a still photograph of Wurat at his apartment. 
Anonymous has pieced together from these time-stamped stills that Warat was missing from Sunday afternoon and we have him back at his apartment just after 9 a.m. on Monday the 15th. However, it has been suggested that the time-stamps have been manipulated, thus the different colors on the time-stamps and the appearance of the lobby had been changed during the week, could not find Warat. We also note just one day before the murder Wurat is seen leaving his apartment and is wearing very similar shorts as the runner in the CCTV footage. It is Wurat's defense that he could not have been on the island at the time of the murders and arrive back at the apartments. Police accepted this and subsequently dismissed him as a suspect. It is not the role of Anonymous here to play detective, but purely to show the flaws in this investigation and hopefully bring some needed attention as to the similarities we are concerned with so that the parents of David Miller and Hannah Witheridge have no doubts as to any convictions that are handed down in the Thai court. Bringing our attention back to Man, the initial suspect for the crime, we have found that he was accused of trying to kill Sean M. Sienna a previous friend of Man and took this still photograph claiming Man was going to kill him and that he is part of the mafia on the island. Here is part of what Sean had claimed. Sean M. Sienna contacted us on our Facebook page and offered to answer our questions after learning about our involvement with this case. A number of questions were asked but all answers were the same of which can be found online and his answers did not change. What Anonymous did ask Sean, was why did he believe Man accompanied with a suggested police officer named, Big Ears was going to kill him, the reply we got, Anonymous does not find satisfactory, Sean's reply was he felt Man needed a scapegoat and that they, namely the island mafia, do not need a reason to kill someone and that they do it often. It is the opinion of Anonymous that Sean M. C. Anna had grave reasons to run, hide and fear for his life even uploading these pictures with the text, the owner of the AC did it, which Sean told us, referred to, if he was found dead on the island, but Sean said that he did not know that man did not own the AC bar where it is alleged an argument took place involving David Miller coming to the aid of Muang Muang, seen here on the motorcycle with the now two convicted Burmese migrants Wei I Fai O and Zolin. Anonymous finds it very disturbing that two Burmese migrants have been found guilty and sentenced to death when you have Moon the initial suspect who was arrested only days after accusing Sean M. C. Anna of the crime and threatening to kill him over it. Sean M. C. Anna has said that he believed if they had have killed him or hung him as he mentioned in his video interview which reminds Anonymous of the Frenchman who was hung with his hands behind his back in Kotau that he would have been used as the scapegoat to protect Man's nephew were at, Sean said. We have men running around the island of Kotau threatening people, being chased, uploading pictures and in fear of their life involving the main suspect man and surprisingly, we are faced with two Burmese migrants awaiting death for the crime. It is also noted that many who live on the island are too scared to talk to police as they claim they fear for their lives. Here are some facts we would like to mention. Hannah with Erich had clutched in the palm of her hand, blonde hair roots where she lay deceased on the beach. Anonymous would like to know why the DNA of the blonde hair has never been investigated as to who that DNA belongs to. If Hannah with a dyed blonde hair roots in the palm of her hands at the scene of her rape and murder, and forensic tests claim they are not her hairs or that of David Miller, how could the Thai police not focus and pursue this major fact and revelation? It would be the opinion of any competent police investigator that those hairs could very well be that of the person who was involved in this crime and yet, the Thai police have dismissed any need to examine the blonde hair and do any further DNA tests. Anonymous finds this unbelievable when there are two Burmese awaiting to be executed for this crime who clearly have black hair. As far as Anonymous is concerned this is a crucial bit of evidence that needs attending to as it could pinpoint who was responsible. Man had his picture taken by Sean M. C. Anna because Sean was in fear of his life and said he was running from Man because they needed a scapegoat for his nephew as he was implicated in this rape and double murder and yet police turn their attention to the Burmese migrants instead of thoroughly investigating Sean M. C. Anna's accusations and statement and allowed Sean to leave the island after a handshake. You think they are connected to what 
happen to David I think, Mahana? I think they needed a scapegoat. I think uh, I think they, they might know who it was. And then, um, then they, uh, they just said to me, um, it was you who killed them. You've got two people's deaths in your hands. Um, we know it was you. Um, you're gonna, you're gonna hang yourself tonight. You're gonna hang yourself tonight. Uh, we're gonna watch you hang. But you, uh, you die tonight. So I, I just ran. I just left. I ran. They chased me into the um, into a shop, um, and I went behind the counter. Uh, I took the, the girl's phone from her uh, that was working behind the counter and I went on my Facebook, took pictures of the guys and uh, uploaded them straight to Facebook to say if anything happens to me, now everybody knows who you are. Why would someone be running around trying to kill someone over a case they knew nothing about or had no connections or involvement with? Such information and evidence does not lead Anonymous into believing that police have the correct culprits for this crime namely, Wei Ifi O and Zorlin. Clearly, Man had reasons to be chasing Sean M. Sienna and Sean had reasons to believe he was going to be killed over David and Hannah's deaths and yet, two Burmese migrants have already been found guilty and awaiting execution for the crime. The runner shown by the Thai police, as being the main suspect has been viewed by an expert and has stated that the appearance of the runner does not fit Wei Fi O on of the two Burmese suspects. Mr. Stephen Cole of Vacuum Forensics had done an extensive forensic analysis of the baguette of Wi-Fi O and the runner in the police released CCTV footage of their mains suspect and concluded that Wi-Fi O could not be the same man seen running from the crime scene. This report was submitted to the court. Police involved in the case have been inconsistent and even had to be reminded about some of the facts. The Thai police have used scapegoats before for crimes that they wanted solved and have blamed non-Thai nationals. This has been proven above with the two cases we presented earlier. Police had allowed the public to take selfies, at the crime scene, showing a total lack of empathy or respect, not only to the victims but their rape and murder investigation, contaminating the crime scene. Police allowed extremely graphic pictures of the murder victims which quickly circulated online instead of having respect for the victims and their family members and completely sealing off the crime scene. Police said that DNA taken from the murder weapon did not match DNA of the two Burmese migrants, incredibly they have been found guilty of the crime. Police later said that DNA from Hannah with a Dijer's body did match both suspects. It is no secret that the DNA from the scene of this crime cannot be trusted. As proven above in past cases the Thai police are not credible for their claims, especially on the island of Koh Tao. A forensic scientist by the name of Dr. Porntip has mentioned that DNA testing in Thailand is at least in 60% of cases, incorrect. Dr. Porntip also mentioned that the DNA process of those responsible for gathering DNA at this crime scene had shown signs of faults in the way the DNA was handled by Thai police. Further, when requested to provide DNA from Hannah's body by the defense, they said it had all been used up. They also declined to produce the actual DNA test results and only produced a handwritten document that had been amended as evidence in which in any other country would have been inadmissible evidence. But in the Thai lower court it was enough to convict both Wei Ifi O and Zorlin and sentence them to be put to death. The fact that Thailand has the death penalty and accepted a handwritten document that had been amended is an absolute joke to any court of law. In court, Thai officials claim DNA taken from Hannah's body matches that of the two Burmese migrants but drive porn tip has doubts of the veracity of the DNA taken from the scene of this crime and how it was handled. We have also learned that to secure a conviction Thai police have lied before and even tried to force a suspect to give them his semen so that they could use at the crime scene. One very important point here about DNA at this crime scene is that it was mentioned that a third person's DNA was found on the chest of Hannah with a ridge. Why hasn't this been investigated? In hindsight after Anonymous has read countless documents, reports, 
comments and read other sources about the DNA from suspects and taken from the victims and the crime scene. It is our opinion that the DNA results are not reliable or credible and it is a wonder the Thai police were able to claim DNA matched the two Burmese suspects after claiming and hearing evidence that the DNA from the murder weapon did not match both Wei Ifio and Zolin. So it seems that the only DNA they have allegedly connecting the two Burmese migrants, is DNA allegedly taken from Hannah's body but we have already revealed evidence that Thai police manipulate DNA results to suit their preferred suspects in previous cases. This gives redoubt towards the outcome in this case. Given the fact that Dr. Pordip, probably the best forensic scientist in Thailand claimed the whole DNA from this crime scene was faulty and did not trust the veracity of the DNA and that no DNA matched the two Burmese migrants from the murder weapon, one would have to question the authenticity of any suggestion that the DNA supposedly from Hannah's body did in fact implicate the two Burmese migrants. If the DNA from the murder weapon wasn't a match to the two Burmese migrants, then how can they have been found guilty of murder? This conviction is exactly as the previous false conviction above that saw two Chinese migrants set up for the rape of Sherry McFarlane in murder of Kelvin back in 2000. Thailand's military prime minister, General Prayuth Chanaka said he believed Burmese migrant workers were the culprits for this crime and shortly after the two Burmese migrants Wei Ifi O and Zolin were arrested. Here is a quick video of General Prayuth Chanaka's military men under him showing just how much the Thai military views Burmese migrants. <laughs> No wonder the Thai military general blamed this crime on migrants, as mentioned before it is part of Thai culture to blame migrants, especially from Burma. Man's involvement with this case is far too suspicious, he was implicated as the prime suspect, he was at the crime scene earlier than most including police and officials, he was contaminating the crime scene, he had his picture taken about the case, he was threatening to kill Sean M. C. Anna over this case and he is well known on the island as someone to fear and he could have been the person who changed the appearance of the crime scene in the two different pictures. It is interesting that Man's brother the island headman Mr. Werafan Tuikian had offered a substantial reward if anyone could implicate his family members to the, the crime. This was more like a challenge if anything, if Mr. Werafan was any real island headman one would think that he would offer a reward to find the killers and those responsible, not for successfully implicating his family members. Again we see here what is of main concern on this island their good name and not justice. These victims are foreigners and experience has shown that the Thai police do not really care about foreigners, they only care about their own good name and their tourism industry. In conclusion, Anonymous has seen so many flaws in this case, so many incompetent officials involved, the DNA cannot be trusted statements have not been taken seriously or investigated thoroughly. Cease it TV footage is missing or was refused to be handed over, people leaving the island not investigated and cut out, travel and mobile phone records ignored and not investigated three suspects. It seems like an island of cut out is an island that tourists should avoid. We do not believe the two Burmese migrants are the actual culprits for this horrific case and our thoughts go out to the families of every case we have mentioned in this video and offer our sincere condolences.
truth and justice is what Anonymous desires and we encourage the Supreme Court in Thailand that has shown integrity in the past to demand a thorough investigation into the deaths of those in Kota and we encourage the Thai government to investigate the allocations of mafia drug dealings, date rape cocktails of female tourists in Kotao, the DNA of the two rape cases dating back in 2000 and offer as much help and support to the still grieving parents who do not yet have closure of the deaths of their children. Anonymous would like to see the Thai government allow foreign police investigators have more power and control over serious rape and murder cases in Thailand that involve foreigners. We do not like the facts in this recent Kotao case and we do not believe the Thai court has convicted the actual murderers of the crime and Anonymous calls for this case to be re-investigated with credible forensic specialists such as Dr. Porntip who clearly has much respect in the eyes of the Thai people, migrants and foreigners. Anonymous will post all of the corresponding links to all of the facts of this video and much more to do with this specific case. Lastly, Anonymous would warn foreigners from preferring Thailand as their first option for a memorable holiday until such a time the Thai police make many changes in the way they handle rape and murder cases involving foreigners or migrants and show more respect to deceased victims. Also Anonymous noted the efforts of the Facebook page CSILA and many interested one in finding the truth about this case working towards correct justice. There are many other who have worked tirelessly on this case and all links will be below. If you feel that this case warrants another investigation feel free to sign the change.org petition via the link provided below in the description. Anonymous at this point supports a boycott Thailand until such time changes are made with the way Thai police handle investigations involving foreign tourists. We are anonymous, we are legion, united as one, divided by zero, we do not forgive, we do not forget, to all those who seek justice, you can, expect us.